Welcome to Hope for the Uprooted. I'm Susan Miller, and I am delighted that you joined us this morning. You know I love the pleasure of your company, and you know that you make my day when you tune in because you matter to me. And through these podcasts, it is my desire to bring you biblical hope, and practical hope and encouragement from God's word, as well as from God's people. And so this morning, I would like to share with you a very special new friend in my life. Uh, Just a quick background. I, of course, am, have a, a trenched in military history. My dad was career military, Air Force. My husband was in the Air Force. My brother was in the Air Force. I was an Air Force brat, but I have a sweet spot in my heart for military spouses and for anybody in the uniform uh, in any branch of the service. And through Just Move Ministry, God has given me the privilege to bring hope to military spouses all over the world. And as I say, it is my sweet spot when I can teach, encourage, listen to, and pray for these women. All that to say is that I was at a Planting Roots military conference for women in Colorado Springs and met the most fabulous military spouse. In fact, they were all fabulous But one very near and dear to my heart that I said, hey, would you be a guest on my podcast? I would love for you to encourage other military spouses. So Stephanie Ward and I met at a Planting Roots conference. And Planting Roots is a nonprofit organization encouraging military women to grow in their faith. Their vision is that military women will be deeply rooted in Christ. We share that same desire, that same vision. And so how how appropriate that Stephanie would join us this morning. Stephanie is a military spouse. Her husband is a chaplain at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. She is a boy mom with two sons and love serving with planning roots and serving through uh, our military spouses through their PWOC, which is Protestant women of the chapel. So Stephanie, welcome to Hope for the Uprooted. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so, so incredibly excited to be here just to hear you um, with that opening. And um, it's so familiar to me because I've listened to you. And um, so it's just really funny to be sitting on this side of it and hearing you welcome people. I'm just so incredibly blessed and humbled to be here today. Well, I, you mean you've listened to my podcast? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited somebody is listening. Yay. A lot of people are listening, Susan. And I just, um, it is one of those God orchestrated meetings because being at the Planning Roots Conference where we got to meet and I do, I just feel like I met my own personal cheerleader, which I know you're a cheerleader, but um, when we met, you know, I, I knew that we were connected, Planning Roots was connected with Just Move Ministries, but when I saw you walk in, I was just so excited because I, you know, have read your book, Um, I've sent your blog and uh, links to your podcast to some of my girlfriends that are either, uh, that are military or even civilian, because we, as you know, we have so many, um, we're just a transient society, a transient world now, and I've just had friends move because of their spouse's job or move because of um, a family need or um, then a military PCS. And so um, even my own family, I actually was uh, talking to my husband's uh, mom and um, I had sent her a blog that you guys had written. I was probably about two years ago when they had just moved to, it was a good move, but as I've heard you say before, even good moves can be a challenge. And so they had been going through some um, 
just changes with their house and everything. And there, there were a lot of challenges. And I had sent my mother-in-law your blog and she wrote back saying, this was so incredible. So it's just what a neat um, opportunity to get to meet you. And I just want to thank you for how you have inspired me and encouraged me in the many different moves that um, we have made in our lives as well. So I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> and now you get to encourage others as you have been encouraged. And so tell us, well, how do you serve with planting roots? Uh, I know that you uh, are active on their committee. Yes. So, you know, you mentioned earlier that planting roots, um, the vision is to connect women um, really to each other and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to feel rooted in the Lord. And so I'm, I'm on the community team at Planting Roots. And so um, I work with a couple other girls and we um, kind of brainstorm ideas that even though um, our military community is throughout the entire world, we try to create like an online community so that our military girls know, our military women in uniform or out of uniform know that they are never alone, um, that there is a online community. So we'll do Bible studies online during the summer. And then um, we're trying to do like a coffee and connect, like a, a phone call every two weeks. Um, we're gonna kick that off probably in the new year and just different ways to kind of build community online um, as our community is very transient in the military. And I love that Just Moved partners with Planning Roots because we are like-minded in Christ and in the unity of helping women plant and grow deep roots in Christ. So tell us about your family. Your husband's a chaplain, right? Yes. Yep. My, um, my husband is a um, He's just a great guy, you know, uh, he loves working out, but he loves spending time with his sons. Um, something I enjoy and appreciate about him is just that he uh, comes home from work, you know, he puts his boots by the front door and then um, I don't know what it is about boys, but the way that they greet each other is very physical. There's a lot of wrestling involved. Um, so it's just my house is uh, very, very male oriented. I've got two boys, Elijah and Isaiah, and um, my oldest is 13 and my youngest is 10. And so um, I think that that's how they express love is through Nerf Wars and through hugs um, and wrestling that way. Uh, my boys are involved in uh, jujitsu and kickboxing and they love video games and all the things. So <laughs> all those things that boys love. Yes, well, absolutely. I just, I just, um, you know, any mom listening that has sons will identify with you. I know at that age in particular, yeah. and I know that you come alongside your husband at times in ministering to others, which is so uh, important and so needed uh, for couples and for individuals. But tell me how many times you've moved, Stephanie. So um, our journey is a little different because uh, we haven't been active duty forever. So my husband and I have been married for 17 years, um, but we always felt called to the ministry and also to the military. So um, my husband, um, we were in the ministry and the reserves. He was also serving as a chaplain in the reserves for about 13 years. And so um, as a minister's family. Um, I think pastors and pastor's families can identify no matter what, you know, if you're kids pastor, youth pastor, music, or lead pastor, um, ministry family moves move quite a bit. And so um, we have moved seven times total, uh, but most of our moves were done prior to going active duty, actually. So this is our first duty station, active duty, but we were 13 years reserved before, but we had moved six times at that beginning part of our marriage as well. So we have moved quite a bit. Yes, you have. And it is because of that um, transition into active duty that I wanted to really get down to the nuts and bolts of what your biggest challenge with moving has been. Mm, yes. So... I would say, um, you know, I was really thinking about this. Um, I think when you're uh, when you move to a new community, and I'm someone that I am 
definitely an extrovert. Um, I love people. And so I think what's challenging is when you move, it's like, how do I find my people? And so um, I think that's been probably the biggest challenge, but I have learned in other moves that I'm not going to just expect them to come to me. So that is why I have connected to groups like PWOC, the Protestant Women of the Chapel. Um, our, our chapel, our church is our community as well. So really just um, moving, I think finding my people because I love people, um, but just being willing to get out there and meet them, that has been something that I have definitely learned over the years and the different moves. Don't just sit alone at home. <laughs> right, exactly. And you know, I've always said, um, the three things you need to do when you move military or secular moves is mm -hmm. find a church, find a church, find a church. Yes. So because that's where family happens and community is built. And so and so but moving, you're right. The biggest challenge for all women is, you know, how do I find that middle of the night friend? You know, how do I begin to form community and connection. So what was your most difficult move and why? I know you shared with me at the conference and I was quite moved. I thought there are women out there going through this and yeah. Stephanie needs to, um, to talk about this. So, well, so uh, my most difficult move was in the year 2011. Uh, I um, so leading up to that move, my husband and I had been apart for six months because of military training. Um, and then he had also accepted a um, youth uh, pastor and family pastor position um, at a new town. And so he was away for six months. I was so I was basically single momming my uh, toddler at the time. Elijah was only two. And then I was pregnant with Isaiah. So my husband missed six months of the pregnancy. So like um, when he said goodbye, you know, I didn't have the preg pregnant belly. And then when he saw me, I was very, very pregnant. And I'm, I get pregnant everywhere, like all over my face. Like I'm just not, <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a change. Um, so, so, um, you know, that was tough. And I just didn't realize how much stress I had felt during that time. So, uh, you know, my body was going through hormone changes and then um, we were doing a major life transition. I was um, teaching full time. I was teaching high school and I, you know, I didn't realize how much of my identity I'd put in my job also as just like, I am a teacher. I am a high school teacher. Um, and so we had been living apart and then finally uh, the baby was due and we, um, hadn't sold our house because we were going through, it was that housing recession around 2011, around that time. And so we both were like, you know what? We just have to go to our new town. We have to go together. So I delivered the baby in Kansas city. And then we drove three hours away to the Jefferson city area and had a brand new baby in a brand new house that I had not lived in yet. And we had just kind of gotten settled in. And um, I can just remember when my uh, mom and dad like pulled out of the driveway as they were leaving because they helped us get settled in with the baby for a couple of weeks. And I remember just sitting there being like, I am utterly alone. And so that kind of kicked off a season of just um, some really painful postpartum depression and anxiety. And my husband was, you know, in a uh, it was our first full-time ministry job. It was our first major move away. I mean, we'd lived away, but we'd not had kids, you know, away from a support system. And so, um, you know, identity was shifted. My uh, culture with my, my church culture had shifted because I was in a new church. Um, I was in a new town and that was just so hard. And I can just remember a lot of times going to bed at night and just crying and crying out to the Lord and being like, you know, Lord, we were here. We were following you in obedience. You know, we're, we're answering a call. We're serving you. We're in the ministry. Like, why is this not easy? Because, you know, following God is supposed to be easy, <laughs> which is not correct. And so, um, but I am so thankful. I look at that time now, but not in that like six to eight months of just hard, hard stuff. 
Um, but I am so thankful for that time now because that is the time that I was desperate for my savior. I have never, um, you know, growing up in an amazing Christian home, having an awesome husband, great, healthy children. I have not been taken to a place of brokenness before. And I had to be uprooted from everything that I knew and my identity was stripped and everything. And I had to find my identity in Christ and in Christ alone. And the Lord had to tell me like, I am your savior. I am everything you need. Don't put your hope in your mom being, you know, 10 minutes away <laughs> and saving you, you know, come to me. And so um, that was such a difficult time, but I am, I know I'm stronger from it and my roots are not in a place or in a person, but in the Lord. And that it took that shocking experience <laughs> to happen, to make my faith deeper in him. Well, Stephanie, what a beautiful testimony, but how realistic that you have articulated what so many women go through. I get letters and, and emails all the time where women say, you know, I'm pregnant, we're moving, or we just moved and I just had a baby and, you know, I have postpartum depression and I'm so alone. And I mean, you have just you have just nailed it with the feelings and emotions that so many young women have, young military as well as young, um, young women in the secular world. It, moving affects everyone. And yeah. the fallout of that, the emotions of that are real. It's a matter of, okay, what do I cling to? I, I have to cling to, to Jesus. That's, that's, he is my only hope. That is the only thing I can do. And those change points, as you said, those change points are life changing because mm -hmm. you either become bitter or better and mm -hmm. you either you either run to Christ or you run away from him. And that is a change point. And it was in your life and it is in so many women's life. It just brings it all down to, OK, it's it's me and it's God. And, you know, we're in this together and I've got to cling to him. So that was a huge personal struggle for you, as well as a change point in your life. And how did God meet you in, at your point of need, Stephanie? I think it was a lot of <laughs> just a lot of humbling, too. You know, I think that um, sometimes when you know, I'm answering the call. I'm being obedient. We're, we're, um, we're moving because the Lord told us to move kind of thing. Or, um, you know, it, it was not easy, but I believe that um, God met me there. He helped me discover resources. And that's something that I clung to. I um, started Googling books. I was like, postpartum depression, what can I do? And he brought me incredible uh, just resources and books. And I uh, remember Jerusha Clark was a book. Um, she's an author. I don't know her, but I read her book and it was just about um, through postpartum depression. She was a pastor's wife that had been through postpartum depression and then talked about um, the road to healing being um, in not just one thing. It was, we are mental physical, spiritual beings. And so I had to have all of those different needs met. Um, I had to be willing to ask for help. Um, and I'm someone that is used to being the person who helps others um, and not the person who receives help. And so the resources that the Lord gave me, uh, Jerusha Clark's book, if you're going through postpartum depression, I want you to read that book. Just Google her name, you'll find that book. Um, and then also just being willing to ask for help. That is such a huge piece. And then also praying um, out to the Lord. I was journaling and writing out my prayers. I uh, was just in the scripture. I was rereading Psalms and Proverbs over and over and over again, because those promises um, are so true. And just hearing the gut-wrenching hearts of David um, when he would pray. And so, you know, see that he was lamenting or in pain and the Lord was hearing him, always hearing him. And so I just knew I wasn't alone. I knew my savior was collecting every tear and they were precious to him. And I really cannot say that enough just to be willing to ask for help 
and to use the God-given resources that are out there. Well, and you know, that is so true. God will meet us at our point of need, sometimes through a person, Mm -hmm. sometimes through his word, and sometimes through providing the practical things that we need to help us get through. But I love the fact that, because I too love the book of Psalms and go to the book of Psalms when I am in a a deep trench of despair. And so, you know, God definitely met you at your point of need. And the biggest thing is that you turn to him that you sought him and through prayer. I mean, what would we do without God's word and his hope and prayer? Oh my, oh my. What encouragement would you give to a military spouse that might be going through similar feelings and emotions? Well, I think whether it's a move, whether it's postpartum depression or just depression in general, because we've talked a little bit about how the life transitions are life changing. So it's not just because you've had a baby, it could be, you know, you're in your fifties and you've moved and you're experiencing anxiety or fear or the unknown. Um, But I, you know, I mentioned it earlier, but I would say the first thing is we cannot sit in our house and um, expect to be okay. We need to put ourselves out there. I think that's the biggest thing that I have learned is um, if you're feeling isolated or if you're feeling alone, be the inviter, not just expect to be invited. And so um, that is something I've learned is at my home, um, the doors are open. Uh, My kids, I've told them, you know, especially with tweens right now, socializing is such a big thing for them. And so I've told them like, we are going to open our house. We're going to have the fire pit in the front yard. We, we are going to have a house of joy, an open door where um, we will invite people in because the thing is, whether people have moved or not in this world, people feel isolated because they don't know Jesus. And so I think the thing that we're all looking for and craving is connection and then um, hopefully being the light in somebody's life so that we are also inviting them to a relationship with the Lord as well. Um, I'd also say, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to go to your church and put in the prayer request box. Hey, I need, I need some prayer right now. It's sometimes just sitting and um, praying with someone, having someone pray over you can just lift your spirits because the Lord is there when two or more are gathered in his name, the Lord is there. Um, and then also I mentioned it before. That's how I found um, the postpartum depression book. I um, am an avid Googler. <laughs> you know, we don't say Go- Google is not God. We know that. However, it is, we live in such an awesome time um, where we can have so many resources available to us. There are incredible resources, but we have to uh, be willing to look for them and we have to be willing to look for the right resources. So, um, you know, if you're struggling with anxiety or depression, uh, you know, I would type in Christian help for anxiety, a Christian help for depression, or just something like that. And you can, um, there are resources out there and do your homework. So that's kind of what encouragement that I would maybe um, say to any woman going through transition right now is just get out of the house, be the inviter. Uh, don't be afraid to ask for help or for prayers. And we we have great resources that are free and available to us. So don't be afraid to use them. Well, and, and again, um, you have combined the biblical and the practical aspect of hope and God provides that through his people. And yes, go to a church. I love that. Put your name on the prayer list. Um, join a group. Go to PWC. I mean, I'm such a fan of PWC in chapels in all the military installations. And that is our connection through the military and where I speak and um, do retreats and conferences too. So yes, don't just sit there and you go out and introduce yourself, right? I know that you have a favorite scripture that you turn to for hope and encouragement. What would that be, Stephanie? 
Um, so the Lord brought me Zephaniah 317 when I was going through my postpartum depression in 2011. And I'm going to read it instead of just say it out loud so I don't get the words wrong. But it's the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, uh, re rebuke you, but he will rejoice over you with singing. And I just love that picture. Um, God is with you. He is a mighty warrior. He takes delight in you. Uh, he does not rebuke you because he loves you and he rejoices over you um, with singing. And to me, that's just such a, a beautiful picture because um, I can I can see myself being so broken, but then the Lord just putting his arms around me and feeling like he is my mighty warrior that he is and he is my savior and just to have hope in that and just to feel the love like his love is so deep and it is so good then another passage that I've been really studying um just the past couple of years that the Lord has brought me to is Romans 5 uh three through five and that one talks about um rejoicing in our sufferings and knowing that suffering produces endurance and endur endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame because god's love has been poured into our hearts through the holy spirit who has been given to us and i think it's been probably a journey of my life but understanding that um i have thought in the past that hard things equate maybe you're not walking in God's will. And that is just not correct. I've really understood that you have to embrace a theology of suffering in this life, that the suffering is something that we can rejoice in because the Lord loves us enough to make us stronger, to make us better. And so um, just really not um, giving into the uh, hopelessness of life or the hopelessness of suffering, um, but to look up because those painful moments are not from Satan. Those painful moments are also from God. Like we have to view those as a gift to make us stronger because God will not leave us as we are. He wants to make us better. And you know, Stephanie, in my broken places, um, in times when I, you know, went through the death of my husband and other traumatic things in my life, you are so right. Um, suffering has brought me closer to my Lord and Savior. You, you reach a depth of desperation where um, the only hope is our Savior. And I just, yeah, you, and you said that well. And to hear a young military spouse so strong in her faith, trusting the Lord so, yet going through suffering that she can stand and say, you know, I choose Christ uh, over suffering. I went through it. It was hard, but there was a purpose and a reason and that was to bring me closer to him. We don't always see that when we're in the middle of suffering and pain, right. but we can look back and see God's work in our lives and in our hearts. I would add a scripture that I, I love to share with military spouses and, and in fact, anyone that has moved and it's Exodus 23, 20. See, I am sending an angel before you to lead you safely to the land I have prepared for you. Mm -hmm. I believe that in him we live and move and that he truly does go before us and prepare a place for us safely. And so, yes, I hang my hat on scripture just like you do. Hey, leave us with three practical things a military spouse can do to settle in after a PCS. Just give us some nuts and bolts, fun <laughs> things, or, you know, practical things. Yes. So um, I wanted to do three words. Number one, passion, and I'll explain them. Number two, resources, and number three, familiar. So the first one with passion, um, before you go, and um, especially if you're a military spouse, reserve, non-reserve, AGR, active guard reserve. I mean, you know, a move is coming no matter what. And so journal, I encourage you to, at some point in the next couple of days, if you're listening to this first one, get your journal and discover what you're passionate about right now. 
Um, you know, I currently do like a hybrid homeschool with my kids um, and I'm passionate about education. Uh, what are you passionate about? Are you passionate about reading um, or writing or Protestant women of the chapel or working out or, but what are your passions? And then when you move, hold on to your passions and don't lose that because then that kind of feels like you're losing part of how God has shaped you. So how has God shaped you? Um, maybe it's crafting, maybe it's something like that, but figure out your shape and your passion and then hold on to that. Um, the second thing is um, resources. I said it before, we are living in an era of um, incredible technology and a way to be connected, even though we are thousands of miles apart. Before this active duty move, I reached out to a ton of military women and they are amazing and they are not going to make fun of you if you email them they are going to write back to you they are going to call you pray over you um i have just learned that i don't <laughs> uh, don't be embarrassed just put it out there and say hey we're doing, um we're moving we're gonna enter this area could you pray for me or thank you for this resource just sending an encouraging word because um I, how we met you know there, everybody wants to be encouraged in some way. And so um, get the resources and then reach out to the people that you're finding online that you have felt connected to their resource. And then the third thing is familiar. Um, figure out what feels familiar to you um, or to your family. I know our family, we are all about the Chick-fil-A and the Chipotle and uh, going to Target and um, to churches. And so that's what feels familiar to us. And so don't lose that. So when you move to a new town, you know, if it's Walmart that feels familiar, if it's um, a gym, you know, there's Planet Fitnesses kind of all over the place. Go work out at a Planet Fitness gym. Just figure out what feels familiar so that when you're in the midst of all of this transition, you can go to a Chick fil A and get a Chick fil A sandwich and feel great about life because you're eating Chick-fil-A chicken, you know? So those are the things, finding that familiar um, for your whole family is very helpful too when you're transitioning. I love it. I love your practicalness. And I can so tell you're just a mama through and through. Find, find your familiar, find your resources, find your passion and, and hold on to that. What great, great wisdom. Um, Stephanie, it's been such a joy to have you. Uh, I, I know you will always be a part of my life and my heart. And I am so privileged that I get to see military women uh, again. Sometimes it's years after. Sometimes I had women come up to me at Planning Roots and say, oh, I met you in Seoul, Korea, or I met you in Germany. But that's the beauty of military friendships is that they are strong and sturdy and over the years you are blessed when you get to see uh, them again so I will look forward to the day that you and I can meet again and I will continue to be your cheerleader and I would say to our listening audience you can do the same thing when you meet a military spouse or an active duty um, member, please be her cheerleader, encourage her, love her, pray for her, offer, you know, I love the, the phrase, how can I help? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's so many things if their husband is deployed or on TDY or, you know, they are just struggling, you can come alongside them in countless ways and be their cheerleader. And I encourage the listening audience to be sensitive to the military spouse. I've always said, you are the keepers of the flame. You're the keepers of the home and keep the fire burning, the home fires burning. And you live, all of the military spouses that I have met, live with a resilient spirit of hope and perseverance and optimism that defines their life that comes with being a military wife, mom, and active duty woman. And so I don't know about y'all who are listening, but anytime I see uh, anyone in our service, in our military, uh, I just fill up with tears. I just thank them for their service. 
um, it's such a privilege to uh, to get to know families, not only the spouses, but gosh, the husbands too have been so gracious over the years as I have become a part of their family. But I just thank you again, Stephanie, and I do look forward to seeing you again. Maybe we can just even FaceTime sometime mm -hmm. and you keep listening to my podcast and reading my blogs and you will be in there in yeah. the midst of all of that. Hey, listening audience, thank you for hanging out with me for a while. You know that I believe in you. And I always want you to move closer to Jesus because it just doesn't get much better than that. And I will see you the next time. Have a great day. Hope for the Uprooted with Susan Miller is a production of Just Move Ministry. Just Move Ministry is a nonprofit, non denominational ministry dedicated to the emotional well being spiritual growth, and ongoing resilience of women uprooted by a move or other major life change. Susan Miller is the founder of Just Move Ministry and the author of After the Boxes Are Unpacked. Around the world, women uprooted by a move are gathering in After the Boxes Are Unpacked study groups. Together, they form friendships and find belonging in a new community while seeking to understand how God is using their move to grow and deepen them. Learn more at justmoved.org, where you can sign up for weekly words of encouragement, subscribe to Bloom, an inspirational publication, and read new articles every month that inform and inspire. Join the Just Moved community and the Just Moved community Facebook group, a place to connect with and be encouraged by other women anticipating or recovering from a move.